Hey, it's Michael Bovey with CRN, and I have a topic I want to cover. I'm getting a lot more of this lately. It's, um, do I have to pay my bills when I leave the country? Some people leave the country and they're not coming back. Some people leave the country from whatever the reason and the purpose that takes them outside the U.S. borders, and they do plan on coming back. Maybe they just don't know when. So, when you have a contract with a U.S.-based creditor, or maybe there's creditors that have a global presence, but you agreed to something in the U.S. That's the laws that govern it, right? U.S.-based creditors do not historically follow people out of the country. And so I've been helping people resolve unpaid collection accounts of almost every flavor for over 20 years. And in that time, I mean, the easiest thing you think it would be to follow somebody would be to, you know, follow them up into Canada, right? Try and collect from them there. You don't see that happen. They're not suing you in Canada for a US-based debt. And then you go back home anywhere to a different country and you're not coming back to the US. You don't find even banks with a global presence trying to pursue you for US-based debt a continent or multiple away, right? It's just not common for them. One, debt that's gone unpaid has gone unpaid for a reason. It's not affordable to that person anymore. And so they're chasing bad debt, right? That's fine when you have legal options to pursue in the U.S. to try and hang over people's head, right? But there's really not a lot of legal options for them to try and enforce U.S.-based contracts overseas, right? And if they do do it, it's super duper expensive. And so how much is it worth to chase bad debt to spend perfectly good money to chase down something that you may never get paid on and incur all those additional costs? So that's one thing. Now, I'm not an attorney. And you should definitely talk to somebody in the United States, an attorney that does consumer law and can best advise you on this, hopefully probably in the state with which you had a residence or left, but because that's where potentially collectors would think you still are if they don't know you're out of country. But here's what I tell people when they ask me these questions. Okay, you've left the country or you're about to leave the country and your bills are completely unaffordable because you can't earn the salary that you work here in the U.S. wherever you're going back to or wherever you're landing. And that's, the debt's just not going to get paid. A couple things. If you're still here in the United States, you can file Chapter 7 bankruptcy. It only actually takes a few months and you can start with a fresh slate, no U.S.-based debt, even in the back of your mind anywhere because you can discharge it in a Chapter 7 if you qualify then you don't have anything to think about after the fact. If you're overseas and you want to file Chapter 7, you have to come back for a day. You have about a five minutes, that's all it is really, uh, physical presence that you have to appear in front of the court, the bankruptcy court, one time. So if your debt's enough and you have the resources enough and it's meaningful enough to you to do that, then talk with a bankruptcy attorney in the state where you would fly back into and, and file. But here's the big thing, and this is the one that I talk to people most about when they, they're planning on leaving or they've left already. You have this U.S.-based address. Most of us, when we can't afford our bills, we just ignore all the calls and the letters. And of course, if you've already left, you probably, unless you have a mail forward, you don't even know those, that mail's coming unless it's electronic, in which case you're getting these constant reminders like most of us when we have unpaid bills. And you tend to just turn that off, right? You just ignore it. You don't even open those emails anymore. And they may think that you're still in the United States. And so a lender could drop your account into all of the buckets that they usually do with unpaid debt, and it could land with an attorney. Or they could get sold off to a debt buyer who then sends your account to an attorney. Nobody knows that you're out of the country at this point. And so they try and serve you legal service of process at the last known address. Maybe that's a relative. Maybe it's a friend and you learn about it that way, and now you're out of country and you've just been sued and it's a hassle. So here's what I suggest, typically. Let them know. Let your creditors know where you're at, that you left the country, that you're not coming back, or at least don't know when you will, if you will. And so now they know that you're out of the country, they pass that information on to a debt buyer, hopefully. The debt buyer doesn't try to sue you because you're in the wrong jurisdiction. And or your creditor doesn't pass it off to a collection law firm because What's the law firm gonna do? They can't sue you. What are they gonna do, write to you? They already know the address is out of country and they're not gonna pursue that debt typically, at least not in my 20 plus year career of pursuing that, or not pursuing it, that is. So it's not something I want people to not think about. If you have US-based debt and you're leaving or have left the country and you do intend to come back within that seven year credit reporting timeline, 
you might want to have a proactive plan to resolve the debt because if you do come back and you need to rent an apartment or you need to even get approved for a cell phone service, your credit's run. And they're going to see things that are unresolved and you might have a struggle hard to get and start an adult life with absolutely horrid credit when you get back. Um, try and have a plan, okay? But if you're never coming back or you're coming back after this stuff will have aged off your credit, I'm not sure that there's a bunch of motivation, at least not from a credit and or what's my collection exposure angle to resolving the debt. There are still people that want to take care of those things after things bounce back for them and you're welcome to it, but not with a gun to your head because you're not, you just don't have the same concerns about collection living outside the U.S. borders that you do when you're in it. See you on the next video.